This week I have not one, not two, but three different activities for you. I did not like that, no? Didn't like that. Hey everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. This week I wanted to talk to you a little bit about reading comprehension. Specifically I want to talk about students asking and generating questions as they read a text. These activities are going to be a precursor to asking questions within a text. They're what I teach to get our students kind of realizing that their questions are important to understanding what they're learning in the world around them and get them generating questions as well. So here are three fun questioning activities. To get students started, I usually start simple. When we're learning about questioning, what I'll do is I will actually play this activity called Let's Generate. So to do this, I just get four big white pieces of butcher paper or poster board, and I write one word or one phrase on the top of each one. So we might have family vacations, donuts, Martin Luther King Jr., airplanes, just four random topics. And I'll usually do this activity after I have taught students the question words, who, what, where, when, why, and how. And so I'll definitely have those displayed on the board. To get this activity going, I simply lay that poster board down in front of my kids and I give them about two to three minutes to generate as many questions as they can about that topic. The groups of students will go ahead and rotate through each poster board so they touched upon all of them. So that activity alone takes about 10 to 12 minutes. When they're done, we go through each poster board and we go through the questions to see what students have generated. I also like to point out as I'm walking around or at the end of the activity that as one student asks a question, it usually generates more questions with the other students. It's kind of like a snowball effect. The next activity to practice questioning is called the five whys. And this one is pretty tricky, but it's a lot of fun. It's also kind of a fun, not icebreaker, but maybe like a get to know you activity if you have students with a new partner or in a new group. But the goal of this activity is once students are paired up, they are challenged to ask five why questions in a row. Now one person's going to be the asker and the other person's going to be the answerer. So it would kind of sound like this. Why do you eat pizza at lunch? Because I like pizza. Why do you like pizza? I like cheese and pepperoni. Why do you like those flavors? I don't know, my mom always buys cheese and pepperoni pizza for us. Why does your mom buy pepperoni pizza for you? Because she gets it for us on Tuesdays. Why does your mom only get pizza on Tuesdays? Because that's when I have soccer practice and we usually get home late. Something like that. That was a silly example, but that's just an idea of what it kind of sounds like and looks like, and it's really difficult for your kids. One of the reasons I like this activity is as students are asking those why questions, it's difficult for them because the question they want to ask probably doesn't start with why. And it's just getting them to realize that they do have all these other types of questions that they can ask based on a student's response. Lastly is the classic game, 20 questions. This one is very popular and easy to play, and all you need is a brown paper bag and an item that would fit inside it. Now, I usually try to stick it to like a classroom item so students can kind of gear their questions towards that. And to do this, I do it whole group, and so I will have students either sitting on the rug or sitting in a circle, and they have to ask 20 yes or no questions to be able to guess what's inside the bag. Now I only give them three guesses, so they're not allowed to ask a question and just start guessing all over the place. They have to use my yes or no answers to infer what might be in the bag to make a good guess. So it's good for inferring too. These questioning activities are ones I include in my comprehension strategies that stick unit, where we talk about schema, inferring, questioning, determining importance, and so much more. Within the unit, there are tons of passages, anchor charts, and activities to get your students really digging through those comprehension strategies to better understand their stories. If you like the activities in this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know. And as always, make sure you're subscribed and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new week's video. See you next week. Bye.